Hello everybody and welcome to another SQL session with Learn at No Star. In today's session, we are going to take a look at another scenario based SQL query. We are going to find out how we can write the SQL to identify whether a day is a weekday or a weekend. And then we are going to take a look at an example and calculate the number of weekdays or work days between two different dates. So let's get started. The data that we are going to use is coming from the sales table. The sales table here has two date columns called the order date and the ship date. Our requirement is to calculate the number of working days between the ship date and the order date, which simply means that we need to exclude any Saturday, Sundays that fall between these two different dates. So now to achieve our objective, we need to be familiar with certain date functions. So the first function obviously is going to be some function that will help us to identify whether it's a Saturday or Sunday so that we can exclude that day or whether it is any day between Monday to Friday. So we have two functions in SQL Server that we can use to achieve this objective. Uh, let's start with the first function. So the first function is called the date name function. Uh, to this function, you need to pass some arguments. So the first argument you need to pass is DW, which simply means day of the week. So it's going to give us the name for that day of the week for any date column. So if it is order date column, then it is going to give the name of the day. Name of the day is anything Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all these are names of the days. And if we select the order date as well, it will be more clear. So from DBO dot sales. Now we execute this query. Okay, there's an error here. If we execute this query, we will know whether this day fell on a Thursday, which is a working day, or a Sunday, which is a weekend day. So we need to exclude any days that are falling on Sunday or Saturday. So this is a simple function that we can straight away use and find out whether the day fell on any of the weekdays or on any of the weekend days. There's another function that would give us the same result and it is called the date part function. Now you need to pass similar arguments to this function. The only difference here is that it does not give the name of the day. Instead, it gives you uh, anything from 1 to 7. So 1 to 7, 1 could be Saturday or Sunday or Monday, depending on the locale of your server. So if it is American, it might be something different. If it is British, it might be something different. So that's why it is better to use a date name function because then we can be sure that irrespective of the location, uh, the day is either a Sunday or a Saturday or a weekday. So we are going to go for the date name function for our requirement as well. Now the second part to our requirement is to find out the number of days between two different date columns. So we need a function that would enable us to calculate those number of days. For that we have one function which is called the date diff function. So you simply write your select query date diff and then you need to define that what is the interval in which you want the difference so we want the difference to come in days so we are going to put dd dd simply specifies days and then you have to give the starting date and then the end date so for us the starting date would be order date and the ending date would be ship date from dbo dot sales and let's just include these two date columns also in our select query so that it's easier for us to understand what is happening. Now, if we execute this query, you will see that it has given us the number of days which lie between these two start and end dates. So 1st of January and 9th of January, it has given us as 8. Uh, for 2nd of January and 4th of January, it has given us 2. So it has simply subtracted 4 minus 2 and given us the result. 9 minus 1 given us the result as 8. But what we actually want is we want to include the start date as well. So 1 to 9, we want to count them as 9 days instead of counting them as 8 days because we want to include the order date as well as the ship date. So the start date as well as the end date. So what we're going to do here is we are simply going to add a 1 to this so that now it will give us the correct results as per our requirement. So now it is going to tell us that there are 9 days between the 9th of January and the 1st of January and that is ideally what we want. 
Now, another thing that we want to find out is how many weekends were there between these two different dates. So, there is an approach that we need to follow for that. So, the first step that we are going to do is to find out the number of weeks which were present between these two different dates. Now, they, we are going to use the same function date difference for that. The way SQL Server identifies the number of weeks weeks between any two different dates is basically by finding out how many complete weekends were present between those two dates which means that between 1st of January uh, 2015 and 9th of January 2015 it, it will simply go and count how many Saturday and Sundays occurred between two these two different dates so they occurred together which means it was a complete week so, if there were Saturday and Sundays occurring together between 1st of January and 9th of January, it would count it as one week. If only one Saturday occurred and the Sunday did not occur, so it is not going to count it as a complete week. Okay, this will become more clear as we go further on and we work with examples. This might have sounded a bit confusing, I know, right now. So what we are going to change here is instead of writing DD, we are going to change the interval and make it WW, that means weeks. And let's remove our workaround of adding a plus one and let's see how this works. So what is going to happen here is it is going to calculate the number of weeks. Now let's go and actually look at the calendars to make it more clear. So let's go all the way back to 2015, select the month of January. So 1st of January and 9th of January. 1st of January was a Thursday, 9th of January was a Friday. So it has identified one week between the 1st of January and 9th of January based on that there was a Saturday and a Sunday lying in between these two dates. So Saturday, Sunday lying together between these two dates, it has identified as one week. Let's take a look at some examples where it has not identified any week. So 6th of January and 9th of January. Okay, let's go back. Go back to January. So 6th of January and 9th of January. So 6th of January and 9th of January. It has identified a zero week because there were no weekends lying between the 6th and the 9th. That means there was no Saturday or Sunday, no weekend day lying between the 6th and 9th. Now let's take a look at another example which is going to be your 11th and 24th. So 11th is going to be a Sunday and then you have got the 24th. So it has identified one week. So it has not identified this as two weeks. It has identified only as one week because there were only one set of Saturday and Sundays lying between these two different dates, which were 17th and 18th. So it has identified it as one week. Now, what all this is coming to is that we need to tweak this a bit to actually identify the number of weekend days falling because for us, the weekend days are any of the Saturdays and Sundays that fall between these two different dates. So we'll put some more logic into this to be able to calculate that difference in the number of weekdays between these two different dates. But these are the functions that we are going to use. So we are going to use the date name function, the date difference functions. Now it has given us the number of weeks. So weeks is, that means it has considered a set of Saturday and Sunday falling together as one week. We are counting the weekend days. So for us, one week is equal to two weekend days. So one week uh, stands for one Saturday and one Sunday. So because we want to make a calculation in terms of days, we are going to multiply this by two here so that we count two days, two weekend days. Okay, so we have made some tweaks here to our uh, functions that we're going to use. So now let's go ahead and write the final query using all these functions that we have just seen and find out the actual number of weekdays between these two different date columns. So let's start with a select statement. Let's select the order date and ship date as it is. And now the first 
thing that we are going to calculate is simply the number of days that occur between the order date and the ship date. And then we can subtract the weekend from that particular date. So we are going to use this function as it is over here. Let's put it on a different line so that it's more clear to us. And let's put this all within brackets. So these different parts of our queries can be within brackets. So now we have the total number of days that occur between those two days. From these total number of days, we need to subtract any day which was our weekend. So subtract any day which was a weekend. So the first step that we are going to do is subtract the number of weekend days that came out from our date diff function. So it would have counted all the Saturdays and Sundays that fall together as a set. So that's why we are going to simply take this part from here and subtract any of the weeks that it counted. All right. And we are going to take this from from dbo dot sales. So if we just run execute this query, you'll see that the results would not be correct. So if we just run this query, it is telling us that between 9th and 1st. So we have to go back to our calendar to verify all this. So let's go back to the calendar. All right. So between 1st and 9th, 1st and 9th, it is telling us there were 7 weekdays or working days. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 working days, which is correct. So this is correct. The answers are correct in this case. But now if you take a look at this record, uh, the 8th and the 10th and we go to the calendar and find out 8th and 10th, it has identified three weekdays lying between 8 and 10 whereas there are only two weekdays which are lying between 8 and 10 because 10th is a Saturday so it should have been counted as a weekend day but the SQL query was not able to count this as a weekend day because it's it's a standalone Saturday it's not a complete set of Saturday and Sunday lying together and therefore it could not identify it as a week. Now we need to fix this obviously. We need to fix any incomplete weekends that lie between these two dates. So incomplete weekends mean that the start date or the order date lying on a Sunday because if it lies on a Saturday then obviously Sunday would be counted and it would be a complete weekend. But if the start date lies on a Sunday it would be counted. The Sunday would not be counted as a weekend. And if the end date lies on a Saturday, because then there is not uh, there is no following Sunday, and therefore this Saturday will not be counted. So we have to make these two things be counted as weekend days, and then we would get the correct results. So if we go back to the query, what we need to do now is count or subtract a day if your start date, which is the order date for us, lies on a Saturday. So for that we need to find out what is that day. So we are going to use our date name function now. So if the date name is going to be let's say Saturday then we have to subtract one otherwise we don't need to subtract one. So when we have this conditional kind of statements we need to use the case statement to make it work in a single query. So case and then we need to write when date name is Saturday then we need to subtract 1 else we need to subtract 0 and then we need to add this case statement and put this within brackets as well. Now another thing that we need to consider is any end date lying on a Saturday which would make it as an incomplete weekend again. So we have to repeat this query for the end date as well. End date in our case is nothing but the ship date. So here we have to put ship date is Sunday in this sorry this has to be Sunday and the end date is Saturday. Then 1, else 0, end. Alright. Now, if we run this query, let's see what we'll get. Okay. Let's go back to our calendar and see 8 and 10. Now, are calculated as 2, which is correct. 
again because they are only Thursday and Friday are the weekdays. 10th was a weekend. So this has now been correctly calculated. So this is the query that you need to use and these are the two different functions that you need to use in order to correctly calculate the number of weekdays lying between two different dates in your database table. Thanks again for watching this video and I hope that you found this useful. If you have any queries, please feel free to write them down in the comments below. Also, please do like, share and comment on this video and please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again. Goodbye.